Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to uh, module 4 where we are trying to find out the connection between the uh, linear algebra and uh, quantum mechanics and under grid representation we have uh, understood uh, how to represent a wave function and then we are trying to represent uh, uh, the operator and in order to represent the operator we have used um, a finite difference uh, method to represent the derivative operator. So, so far we have seen uh, the first derivative how to represent, but we have to remember that first derivative is not uh, uh, present in the Hamiltonian operator. So, Hamiltonian operator has uh, second derivative because kinetic energy uh, by 2 m this is the second derivative. So, we have to get the second derivative expression for the uh, with the help of finite difference method. So, for that what we need to do is that we have seen the Taylor series expansion for the forward and backward expressions and previously we have taken subtraction now we will take the addition. So, we will add them together. So, if we add them together we get x naught plus delta x plus f x naught minus delta x equals to f x naught plus 2 second derivative at x naught divided by 2 factorial delta x square plus 2 plus 2 uh, fourth derivative which is uh, taken at x naught divided by factorial 4 delta x to the power 4 like this. So, we get this uh, 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 expression adding forward and backward difference uh, expressions and then we will rearrange this equation a bit to find out this uh, second derivative. So, second derivative is going to be then dx2 second derivative at x equals as x naught is going to be then f x naught plus delta x minus 2 f x naught plus f x naught minus delta x divided by delta x is square plus the remaining part is going to be this one and because it is it depends on x to the power 4, but I have to divide x to the power 4 uh, delta x to the power 4 by delta x to the power uh, x square. So, that is why finally the error is going to be delta x square that is going to be the error. So, this expression, this expression represents the central difference expression 
for second derivative at point x naught and this exhibits an error which is delta x square um, quadratically it will uh, scale with delta x square uh, delta x and um, so based on this one can now construct what will happen uh, for different points. So, we can write down that I can have this y1 double dash that is the second derivative at y1 point. So, I started with my wave function was something like this y0, y1, y2, y3 like this and I am trying to find out the derivative uh, at each point and if I want to find out the derivative at each point how do I get that? I can get this by delta x square then to in, it, in order to find out the derivative at y1 point I need to know the derivative one step forward which is y2 sorry I need to know the function value one step forward that is y2 then function value at that point 2 multiplied by y1 plus function value um, one step backward which is going to be y0. So, this is the expression for the uh, derivative at y1 point. Similarly, derivative at y2 point is going to be 1 by delta x square then function value uh, one step forward which is y3 minus function value at that point y2 plus function value one step backward which is going to be um, 1 and this is the way we can go ahead. Finally, I can have y n minus 2 uh, position uh, where I have because here we have n minus 1 total number is n, n number of points we have is starting with 0 that is why it is ending at n minus 1 if I have total n number of points and that is why I will not be able to get the derivative at this point because I do not have any point one step backward. Similarly, I cannot get the derivative second derivative particularly second derivatives with central difference method. I cannot get the derivative at this point also because I do not have any points one step forward because I need one step forward and one step backward values also for the function. So, I have started with y1 and I will end with y n minus 2 where I will be able to write down delta x square uh, then y um, then one uh, function value uh, one step uh, forward which is n minus 1 minus function value at that point n minus 2 plus function value one step backward which is n minus 3 that is the way we will get this. Now, this set of expressions set of equations can be very easily represented with the help of uh, with the help of matrix representation and how we know matrix uh, multiplication very nicely and we will use that matrix multiplication method to represent this, um, uh, this set of equations. So, we will we have this f uh, the wave function which is represented on the x grid already and uh, we have this uh, x grid representation. So, I will write down the x grid representation as is like this. So, I have the wave function as y naught, y 1, y 2 like this y n minus 1. This is my wave function. On this wave function this operator is acting and if this operator can be represented as 1 minus 2 1 0 0 0 then 0 1 minus 2 1 0 0 then 0 0 1 minus 2 1 0 like this 
and we can continue this and final I will have here 1 minus 2 1 like this. So, what we see here and then I have this 1 by delta x square this is represented by the the function after taking the derivative discretized function after taking the derivative. So, I get y 1, I get y 2, I get y 3 and like this and then I get y n minus 2 also like this. And why this is the way it is? Uh, because if we multiply this uh, operator by uh, the, this matrix by this matrix then what will happen I will end up with y1 double dash I have to equate uh, the left hand side element to the right hand side element. So, in that case I will be equaling uh, equating this y1 value to the first um, product. So, that product is going to be y0 minus 2y1 plus y2 plus all our others are 0 because it is multiplied by 0. So, in the end I get back this expression of course, we have this 1 by delta x square. So, each element will be equating will be equating each element and will get back this set of equations. So, this entire set of equations one can represent in this matrix form. The moment I represent it in the matrix form what I get immediately is the vectorial represent uh, matrix representation of the derivative operator because I started. So, I started with so basically uh, this d if I if I if I use d d2 dx2 this operator can be expressed in the matrix form in the under grid representation as this 1 0 0 0 then 0 1 minus 2 1 0 0 0 0 1 minus 2 1 0 like this and we will continue this and finally we have this um, uh, 1 minus 2 1 0 like this. So, what we get this matrix is actually um, if the dimension of this matrix is going to be n minus 2 by n that is the dimension. So, I have n minus 2 number of rows and n number of column. So, I have n number of column and n minus 2 number of rows I have in this in this matrix and uh, that is the representation. So, matrix representation of this derivative operator under um, under this um, uh, under this uh, uh, grid representation is given by this. So, that is the way we can represent the second derivative uh, in the matrix form. So, we will have one example simple example and this example will be uh, helping us because we are dealing with too many numbers. So, we will just reduce the dimension of the system. We have let us say the grid is following I have this x naught then I have this x 1 then I have this x 2 and then I have this x 3 and finally, I have x 4. So, this is the grid I have selected a very small grid I have selected and obviously, the difference between each adjacent uh, grid points is delta x. Now, if we take this and uh, under this grid uh, if I have the wave function uh, the uh, function represented by y 0 y 1 y 2 y 3 and y 4 if it is represented. So, it is a 5 by 1 matrix that if that is the way if the function is represented then question is how do I represent the uh, the derivative at each point. So, derivative can be represented by according to the previous uh, discussion is going to be I will get only the derivative at uh, 3 different points y 2 and y 3 only 3 different points I will get that. 
derivative at the first point and at the last point I'll get not get the uh, second derivative because I do not have the data point which is required to calculate that derivative. So, this is going to be delta x square and now I will explicitly write down the full matrix 1 minus 2 1 0 0 then 0 1 minus 2 1 0 then 0 0 1 minus 2 1. So, this is the matrix I have derivative matrix and then the function is going to be 0 y, y, y 0 y 1 y 2 y 3 y 4 that is the function I have. So, this is your 5 by 1 matrix this is your um, uh, five, uh, 3 by 5 matrix 3 rows I have and uh, this is also uh, 3 by 1 matrix. So, that is the way we have the values and if somehow uh, not somehow for some reason if we can say that y0 is 0 and y4 is 0 when I am defining the function for the first time this function when I am defining the function if I uh, if I select a defining condition if I select a defining condition um, uh, like this. So, initial value is 0 and final value is 0. Uh, then what we can do? We can eliminate these two values and we can write down another simplified form which is going to be y2 dash and then y3 double dash is equal to delta x square then this is going to be now reduced this is going to be minus 2 1 0 then 1 minus 2 1 and then 0 1 minus 2. The entire um, uh, matrix dimension has reduced now because of this initial defining initial condition and that is very important to realize. So, the moment we do that if I if I use this defining condition for the function where we are saying that the initial point has to be 0 and the final point has to be 0 which means the boundary. So, in the grid points the boundary values are actually taken to be 0. Uh, if we do that then this matrix which was previously 3 by 5 is becoming now square matrix 3 by 3 square matrix and defining it in a square form is very advantageous. I will uh, show that uh, why I should do that and the moment I do this square matrix this becomes a tri diagonal matrix. Tri diagonal matrix why tri diagonal matrix is because I have now um, uh, diagonal elements here then upper diagonal elements and then lower diagonal elements only 3 um, uh, components uh, associated with the diagonal uh, uh, region is uh, uh, having the finite value otherwise every other points are going to be 0. So, so a tri diagonal matrix should look like this a tri diagonal matrix in general a tri diagonal matrix should look like um, I have a, this is going to be a square matrix I, I will have always diagonal values I will have lower diagonal values and upper diagonal values remaining part is going to be all 0. So, this is called tri diagonal matrix and I can represent so, so basically this d2 dx2 gives me a tri diagonal matrix. when I use this boundary condition this defining condition for the for the initial wave function. And this kind of trigonal uh, tri diagonal matrix uh, can be uh, used to find out the eigenvalue and eigenvector for the operator. So, we will move on and we will now look at the 
Hamiltonian operator. This is what we wanted to do under grid representation. We have used finite difference method and under grid representation we will represent that. So, one dimensional Hamiltonian as we know that Hamiltonian operator is going to be minus h car square by 2 m d 2 d x 2 plus v this is your Hamiltonian operator. Under grid representation we have already discretized the wave function. So, wave function is represented by this this is going to be psi 0, psi 1, psi 2 like this psi n minus 1 this is the grid representation and um, um, these are the values we have uh, and, and we are going to use that defining condition. Defining condition is that at the boundary that is going to be psi 0 is going to be 0 and psi n minus 1 is going to be 0 this is the defining condition we are going to use for the wave function. So, we, we have to select the grid such a way that in the end here at the beginning of the grid and at the end of the grid the psi values should take 0. This is, this is, this is, this is something which we have to do so that I can represent the derivative operator in the tridiagonal square matrix form. And, and question is I cannot just represent like this way I have to check whether I am uh, supporting or, or I am, am I supported by the Hil the property of the Hilbert space because I am dealing with in the end wave function. So, any wave function uh, uh, which is living in the Hilbert space must be square normalizable and if it is square normalizable at the boundary it has to be 0. So, this, this is the basic idea. So, in the reduced Hilbert space when we will be presenting in this finite grid representation it is quite clear that this initial defining condition is spontaneously supported or, or naturally supported by the reduced Hilbert space the property of the reduced Hilbert space. So, you are good to go with this kind of wave function where the initial and the final values should is taken to be 0. And if we have taken uh, 0 then this matrix has reduced to this form this is going to be psi uh, n minus 2. So, this is now n minus 2 by 1 matrix under this representation. Now, we will use the central difference uh, method to calculate the second derivative. So, I have this kinetic energy operator which is h car square by 2 m then I have d 2 d x 2 which is now I am going to write down as h car square by 2 m then for this part I get 1 delta x square value and then I have this uh, matrix and remember in this matrix I will not start with 1 minus 2 1 because I have already used this defining condition. So, I will be using directly as minus 2 1 0 0 0 like this then 1 minus 2 1 0 0 like this then 0 1 minus 2 1 0 like this and then this will be continued finally I will have here minus 2 1 0 0 like this. So, I get a square matrix, but it is a tri diagonal matrix it has diagonal upper diagonal and lower diagonal finite values. So, all other values are uh, 0. So, I have this n minus 2 by n minus 2 matrix represented by this. So, what I get is that the kinetic part the kinetic part the kinetic part is represented by this matrix yeah, under under grid representation uh, with the help of this finite difference method. On the other hand if I look at the potential part in the Hamiltonian I had kinetic energy part plus potential energy part and if this potential energy part has to be now expressed. So, potential part is going to be 
uh, how how do I get that? Now potential we have to have one realization here. Potential is nothing but a multiplication uh, function. So I have v x psi x. So psi has been already uh, represented by grid. Uh, uh, under grid representation discretized psi has been represented. So, this is let us say psi and v x let us say v x has a form of like this let us say v x. So, if I multiply these two functions multiplication of these two functions this is scalar multiplication. So, scalar multiplication is nothing but the multiplication of individual element of the respective um, matrix. So, what we have is that V can be represented diagonally because it is just a scalar multiplication. So, so in the end V x psi x in the matrix form it should be like V 0 psi 0 v 1 psi 1, v 2 psi 2 like this and then v n minus 1 psi n minus 1 because we have taken psi to be 0, psi, psi 0 to be 0. So, this this first term and the last term will be gone because of the uh, boundary condition. So, I have now v n minus 2 multiplied by psi n minus 2. So, this is going to be now n minus 2 multiplied by 1 um, n minus 2 by 1 matrix column matrix. Now, this column matrix can be very conveniently represented by following form. We get this column matrix with the help of this V 1, V 2, then 0, 0, 0, 0, V 3 like this and then this is this is going to be V n minus 2. So, this is 0, this is 0 like this way. So, what we get and here we get psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, psi n minus 2. So, basically uh, we get back this uh, element by element multiplication to get this scalar um, multiplication. Uh, with the help uh, for the potential operator, the potential operator in the end can be represented as a diagonal form. So, so the conclusions we have is that potential part which is only x dependent, we have to remember that we have not included any time dependency so far, just we have we have kept the entire derivation very simple and uh, we have uh, um, uh, maintained that one dimension so that we can understand the uh, basic idea behind it. And so, potential part is giving me a diagonal matrix and kinetic part is giving me one tri diagonal matrix. So, these are the two things and once we get uh, potential part, potential matrix and kinetic part both part it is just a matrix addition in the end we have to do to get the, uh, the, uh, the TDSE because and matrix addition we know matrix, matrix addition is done by adding individual element corresponding elements. So, this is something which we should remember that in the end that under grid representation with the help of pseudo spectral uh, basis uh, and using finite difference uh, method, uh, one can represent kinetic energy part of the Hamiltonian in tridiagonal matrix and potential part as diagonal matrix. So, we have uh, with this we have uh, come to the uh, end of this module um, where we have discussed quantum mechanics, the connection between quantum mechanics and linear algebra. Uh, we have shown different uh, linear al algebra uh, terminologies and uh, also we have shown uh, the analytical approach uh, using uh, uh, 
matrix algebra, how can I represent different um, uh, operators. So, this is the general form of the wave function under grid representation, then this is the general form of the uh, kinetic energy part and this is the general form of the potential energy part under grid representation. So, we will stop here uh, and we will meet again uh, for the next module.